Good afternoon and welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education work session for June 21. May we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. Second. All in agreement? Aye. 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 Okay. Get a motion to, has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes from, okay. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes for the closed session from June 7? Make so a motion. We, Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Can we get a motion to approve the minutes from the open session of June 7th? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Mrs. Smith. Good evening, Vice President Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members, and executive team. My name is Jolene Smith. I am the supervisor of special education, and I come to you this evening to present the special education staffing plan. <clears throat> the development and approval of the staffing plan is in alignment with COMAR 13A 050213D. And the procedures and expectations for the staffing plan are outlined by the State Department of Education. The purpose of the staffing plan is to ensure that each LEA is able to provide appropriate and adequate personnel and resources that um, ensure the provision of a free and appropriate public education for all students with disabilities in their least restrictive environment. So on this slide, you can see all of our 14 schools are represented. And um, within each box, you can see the overall enrollment for each school at the end of the 22-23 school year, as well as the total enrollment for <coughs> students with disabilities. The boxes that are blue are our Title I schools. And then our schools that have regional programs are also um, reflected in parentheses it indicates how many regional programs we have within each building a regional program is a program that is designed to provide a higher level of service for some of our students that require additional services that can't be delivered in some of our tr traditional classrooms um, and as such we're able to provide those more intense service needs um, within these regional programs. So sometimes our students will have a home school, which is their residence school, but then they have a different service school, which is where they actually receive their services. <clears throat> that does have an impact on the overall percentage of students with disabilities within those buildings that have the regional programs. And that's why you'll see two percentage points um, in, in those schools with regional programs because the um, first percentage is kind of an inflated percentage reflective of those regional programs, whereas the second percentage is a more accurate depiction of what the enrollment percentage would be if the regional program were not there. <coughs> so our special um, education programming in the state of Maryland is required to address children birth through 21. So our staffing plan addresses um, children that participate in our infants and toddlers program as well as our school age programs and even um, addresses our students that are 18 to 21 that are participating in our partnership with Chesapeake College where they attend um, instructional programming at Chesapeake College so that they are participating with kind of same age peers in a more typical and traditional um, environment. So one of the expectations of the staffing plan on page 11 is that we provide services um, in a full continuum of service delivery models. So on this slide, I'm illustrating for you that continuum from general education to special education, least restrictive to most restrictive environments. You can see each of the regional program opportunities that are offered within the district and the schools that house those programs, as well as some of the related services. Actually, those are all the related services that we provide. Um, and some of those in 
include transportation, speech language pathology, counseling services, vocational services, et cetera. So starting with our youngest population, we're gonna start with our infants and toddlers just to kind of give you an overall picture of who we serve and how we do so. <clears throat> so during the 22-23 school year, we were able to provide services to 100, 111 um, children. And you can see that the largest percentage of representation was our children ages two to three. And those were represented, they represented 62.5% of our population. We've seen an increase in our referrals since 2020. Um, we saw a pretty steep incline from 2021 um, to 2022. And then it's kind of plateaued, but it has continued to be right around that 125 mark. Um, so our infant and toddler team is really kind of rocking and rolling with the number of referrals that are coming in. For our preschool age students, we were able to serve 121 students this year. Um, you can see that 34.7% of the students were provided services through our traditional pre-K um, service delivery. And the remaining students were provided services either through itinerant, our regional three-year-old, or our regional four-year-old blended program. Then we transition to our school age population and again, this is kind of another rep representation of the information on the initial slide. You can see that the total enrollment for each school is captured with the red bar and the special education enrollment is captured um, by the blue bars. Obviously the, um, the, the bars are commensurate with one another as we see the overall enrollment go up. We see um, a similar reflection in the special education enrollment. If we kind of drill that down and we look at that special education um, population in isolation, you can see that we've had um, an increase since 2021 in our overall uh, special education population. We saw the biggest increase um, in the areas of specific learning disability, multiple disabilities, um, and also our intellectual disability population. We did see a slight decline in our population of speech and language impairment, as well as developmental delay. Here in Queen Anne's, we really pride ourselves on being a highly inclusive county. So we try to include our students with disabilities with their um, general education peers whenever it's appropriate to do so. So we really wanna strive to meet that 80% or more in the general education setting. So our current year um, puts us at 83.6%. And so we've kind of ranged anywhere from that 80 to 85% range. Um, I did want to note that we did see a decrease in our percentage of those students participating in separate facilities, which does also include our non-public um, placements. So what are we going to do moving forward? So we are going to continue to address disproportionality and we want to do so by really taking a close look at our multi-tiered multi systems of support or response to intervention. We really wanna streamline that process and make it uniform across the district so that we're not seeing pockets of um, eligibility for particular student groups. We wanna make sure that as a whole, we're following um, really uniform data collection intervals and strategies for implementing those interventions across schools. Um, and we really feel that that will inform that eligibility process and ensure that it's not, that there's no bias involved in that process. In addition to that, we've worked very hard to dedicate an IEP chairperson to each school. Currently, we have 10 of our 14 schools with a dedicated IEP chairperson. This person is responsible for ensuring compliance, ensuring that the IEPs that are being developed are effective, and also uh, they support our existing special education and co-teaching um, general education counterparts in terms of co-teaching, implementation, as well as mentoring and coaching. We wanna to continue to focus on that compliance and the development and implementation of IEPs. We are also looking to implement a progress monitoring component to our functional behavior assessment and behavior intervention plan process and really develop a closer collaboration between special education and general education through our student services department. 
um, to ensure that, again, there is uniformity and kind of consistency in terms of how we're addressing discipline um, when we're looking at behaviors as well as the interventions that we're applying to be proactive so that we don't even get to that, that point. And then finally, we really wanna increase the number of special education students that are taking and passing technical skill assessments and or earning an industry recognized credential because we recognize the power and value that this brings post-secondary after they leave us and go to their next chapter. I am happy to report though that about 55% of all high school special education students participate in a CTE course, which is an increase of 50% from last year. We held two um, very big events this year, and um, I really want to kind of give kudos to our transition coordinator, Heather Maddie, and also our supervisor of um, CTE, Adam Tolley, because they really worked collaboratively to make sure that these events take place, place and they're successful. Our What's Next Cross County Conference was held in the fall. We had 53 families participate and 47% of those families were from Queen Anne's County. Um, we had 15 presenters and 20 vendors and the purpose of this was really to kind of inform families on the different agencies and opportunities that are available to them once they leave our, our brick and mortar buildings. And then this spring we had um, our Spring Regional Career Expo, which was also a cross county collaborative with Caroline, Dorchester, Kent and Talbot counties. Um, this was an inclusive event, so it was open to both special education as well as general education students. Uh, we had 161 students registered across counties and 49 of those were Queen Anne's County um, students. So we were really happy at the participation that we had there. Um, we do give the opportunity for public input and we actually encourage and, and kind of seek that out. We do have our special education citizens advisory council as well as we you know, monitor the board of education meetings to kind of listen to community feedback. In addition to that, we meet regularly with staff, administrators, um, related service providers, and even school assistants to kind of get feedback on caseloads, schedules, what are the needs within the county so that we can ensure that we are providing the services that are required for our students. We had 98 parent contacts, which was an increase from last year. Um, so we do have our family support network, which includes um, our family support liaison that is through our infant and toddler side, as well as our family support liaison on our, our school age side. Um, they are there as a resource for family engagement, as well as um, a resource for parents to reach out should they have questions or need resources, et cetera. We do publish three um, newsletters throughout the year that is just kind of chocked full with lots of different opportunities and resources for our families. Um, so we, at the time of this publication, we did not have the state survey data for from MSDE yet. Um, but oftentimes the information that we're getting is gonna be lag data anyway. And really what we wanted to see is more timely information on how we're doing. What is the feedback that our parents are providing us? So what we did is we kind of created an internal survey and I know I've, I spoke to this last year, but um, we continued it this year. So we, we poll parents through an internal Google um, form and parents, respond and, and give us feedback. This gives us the opportunity, should there be negative feedback for us to, if the parent indicates they would like us to reach out, to immediately reach out to them and try to rectify or solve any problems that may have um, arisen. I'm happy to say, and unfortunately, because this is not a live presentation, I can't give you the exact percentage, but 83% um, of the respondents indicated that they felt that they were a welcome and equal member of the team. I believe it was 93% of the respondents said that they felt that the contact was friendly and 83.8.3% indicated that they felt that the IEP that was developed was going to be successful for their child. None of the questions had any negative feedback, so there weren't any indications of um, disagreement or strong disagreement, which we were very pleased about. We are required in the staffing plan to maintain um, our maintenance of effort to either meet or exceed that. And I will say um, 
thanks to the great partnership that we have with our county commissioners, as well as the input from the state and federal resources, we've been able to um, not only maintain, but exceed that maintenance of effort. Um, and all of that you know, really speaks to the ability that we have to provide services to our students. Um, we do regularly analyze the staffing numbers and we look at kind of the ratio of our um, staff to students. And we, we look at it from the perspective of infants and toddlers all the way up. So we're not looking at any one particular group when we are analyzing that. And that does also capture uh, child find as well as our parentally placed student that are in private or parochial schools. So for example, we do have a partnership with our private schools where we will provide speech services to those students that are not necessarily in our brick and mortar buildings, but we will provide that kind of in tandem with them. Um, and we have to kind of account for that when we look at our staffing plan as, oh, as well. So this slide kind of breaks down the special education staffing. You'll see that the biggest chunk of our staff is dedicated towards our special educators as well as our school assistants. Um, that's where the bulk of our attention goes because we recognize that that is where the power um, lives. This slide breaks it down a little bit farther by school. It also captures the projected um, student enrollment compared to the actual so that we can analyze how far off those projections were from one year to the next. And then we use that information to also kind of project forward what the next year is going to bring in terms of percentage of, of students with disabilities. And then we take that and we kind of calculate how many staff or teachers that we're gonna need within that building to maintain those those relatively low caseloads. Here you have our related services and we do have a partnership with the Midshore Special Education Consortium. Uh, they do, uh, we work with three other districts where we kind of pool our resources because we recognize the small counties that we may have um, a need for a 0.75 that is difficult to hire. But if you partner with another district, it makes it a little bit more feasible to do. Um, so we do secure services that include audiology, occupational therapy, physical therapy, um, as well as our teachers for the visually impaired and a teacher for the hearing impaired as well. And then outside of that, here within the district, we're able to staff our school psychologists, speech language pathologists, behavior specialists, et cetera. This particular slide um, kind of outlines where the funding sources come from in terms of local grant or contracted positions. And I would like to, to note that our contracted positions have gone down over the past several years as we've been able to secure FTEs within our local or grant funding um, and directly hire those, those staff members, which is always preferred as Mr. Smith has said more times than not. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Um, that was great information. I just have a couple. Is when you have the, the littles, the twos and the threes, where are you getting most of your referrals from? Like, how do they come onto our radar as needing some um, extra assistance? So referrals can come from pediatricians' offices. They can come from parents directly. They can come from um, daycare providers. So it, it really can come from any kind of source that feels that this child may need a little extra attention. Um, and then they're referred and then go through a screening process to, de to determine if in fact that, you know, we really need to look a little deeper and figure out what exactly is, is kind of going on. And I'm sorry, I did not know what the extended IFSP, what is the IFSP on there? So the IFSP is the um, individual family service plan and it's for our students that are not quite school age yet. So once they become three, they have the opportunity to either go to the school age side of IDEA or they can stay on an extended option. The extended option, which allows them to stay on that family plan, um, affords them the opportunity to continue to receive services in the home as opposed to on the school-based services in the home is, is not really an option unless you're a home-based or receiving services through home hospital. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Do we have 70 questions? Okay. Well, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Hello, Mrs. Towers. Good evening, Vice President Schiffinelli, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. My name is Jane Towers, and tonight we bring before you our approved FY24 budget book for your review and reading pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> All 63 pages. <laughs> and what is that, eight, six, five? Yes. Right, right. So just some items of note here as we kind of um, take a glance at a couple of the pages. Page three is going to be that budget summary that you approved back in March. So that summary is basically your ins and outs, what revenue is coming in, plus and minus, as well as expenditures. So uh, the budget increased overall, the bottom right hand number of $5,470,761. We go to the next page, you can see a total of all operating funds. Total of operating funds approved for 24 is $117,774,050. The difference you can see highlighted on page Six is really going to be from the restricted fund. The restricted fund with grant opportunities with the Maryland Leeds was in 23, as well as the gears. So the decrease we're seeing is in those two grants as a whole. We still have some funds left that we will look to spending out for 24 on those grants, but we brought it in in 23. And that's, that's under the federal? Yes. Because that's down 63%. Right. Now, I, you know, and I, it's been a tough year with this budget going from ESNER funds and after COVID and all that, but I really, I think you all have done a good job. Mm. The board's done a good job. And I want to thank the commissioners too, because 7.5%, they've stepped up. Yep. Even that our, our highest funded thing, the state's up 1.8, federal's down 63, mm -hmm. other funding's down 24. Our county has stepped up to make this work for us this year. Yeah. And it's been, it's been tough. And, but I, you know, I, I, you know, we've met all our needs and uh, I, I, you know, like I said, I want to thank them publicly for that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't, I'd have to ditto that. And, and it is this, this budget is as tight of any budget I've ever seen. We are going to be seriously holding our breath <laughs> as we move through. Um, we've tried to do our best to add additional fuel costs in there but that's definitely a wild card for us. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it, it's just tight. I've never seen it. And I don't, I anticipate that the next three years will be the same as we work through um, the <laughs> blueprint and um, some, some concerns with some of the calculations in there and comp ed really concerns me for this coming year. Um, and and it's, it's not working in the blueprint that the blueprint's great, it has great intentions, we support it. We know that it, it's there to enhance and lift uh, our teaching staff um, and provide opportunities that way. But I have big concerns with the um, formulas in there. Mm -hmm. So uh, we need to get that. The, those formulas did not account for inflation, rising costs, and things like that. And uh, and you know the the commissioners absolutely stepped up to the plate. Um, and we're going to continue a good partnership with them and, and work through next year. But it is a tight, tight, tight budget. And that's and, and this is our operating budget. Mm -hmm. Our other side is our capital budget, right. which they put a lot of money into our schools, have. our roofs, mm -hmm. things like that to maintain our 13 schools. We have 41 projects on the books. And right a now. lot of those right now that are happening uh, under Mr. Pender's leadership are because of the commissioners um, and their contribution to capital. Yeah. I, Totally second what um, Dick said about just appreciating what everyone has, has brought to the table, the extra monies and stuff. And then, of course, the concern, especially with the blueprint, that yes, we're on board with the concepts behind it, but the funding is a concern. But I have to say I'm really optimistic because it feels like every year your team comes in with all these wonderful grants that they get and then seek and win. And um, so hoping for some of yeah, that. Yeah, we're going to we'll definitely well. keep at that for sure. <laughs> every you. day, yeah. literally. Yeah. So um, one more item I want to bring to your attention, and that is um, to kind of piggyback off of the, the blueprint discussion. You'll start to see in your unrestricted the two different funding categories. So the first one is going to be your summary six. of mm -hmm. page six. Right. Six, I'm sorry. That's okay. I just want to make yes. sure they're following. Or five, five, page five. Oh, five. It's your revenue summary unrestricted funds. Mm -hmm. Page five. Yeah, yes. So the first co um, column there, you'll see summary of major state aid programs, state share. So those are the different blueprint buckets that you'll start to see. And we're really going to be restricted 
to how those funds are utilized. So the foundation base, as Dr. Salins said, um, is definitely an item of concern because that's where the raises come from. That's where we're supposed to allocate funds to, to um, support staff raises. So I won't go on to, into too much detail, but you also see underneath there, there's a local share piece that we're breaking out between those buckets too as well coming into to, uh, 24. You know, I, you know, I think this board's done its due diligence on this blueprint thing and trying to meet our expectations. Some of the things didn't go the way we wanted this year as far as how we were categorizing things. But, you know, we're looking forward trying to make this work because it's going to be a cliff coming. And some of these counties, if they're not preparing for it, are going to be in trouble. Like we say, we're, we're tight. We're feeling it and, right and, now. And we're, I mean, I think yeah. done our due diligence as far as looking ahead and saying, here's how we're going to meet it. If the state doesn't agree with us, but, you know, the state tells us what to do and then sits there and says how you're going to fund it, but, you know. Yes, yeah. it's, but to Jane's point, exactly. if you look at under the summary of the major state aid, which is the top one, the state share, and you look at the foundation base, you'll see that there is a decrease there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that's what we were, we were supposed to use to be able to provide our enhancements to salary, and you can see that that base didn't even give a matter of fact, it was a negative as opposed to any positive monies to be able to, to fund that enhancement. That's what's broken that we need to really work on. And, and I can say that I know as, as a superintendent's organization, um, we are already starting to our plan of action of what our legislative session is going to look like next year. Where is our push? Who's doing what? What is our plan of action? And the CFOs are right there beside us, making sure that we um, have a good plan of action as we move into the legislation season. And, and the thing is, you know, they're going to go back and say they they do a million and a half next year. That just gets us back to where we were this previous exactly. year. Yes. So, you know, right. you know, you got to make us whole from where we were right. and then mm -hmm. add to it, not sit there and say, oh, we're right. giving you a million and a half. Well, you took a million and a half this year away. We're, we're, that's two years and we're, 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 we're still at yeah. zero. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we compare it, you know, as I talk with my colleagues, it's like we're working in a recession right now, to be honest with you. Like that's how we feel every day. You know, we're, we're looking, a lot of my colleagues are looking at laying people off, which we will be next year if we can't mm -hmm. be whole. Um, and, and, but all the other organizations out there are not. And that's certainly not the intent of the blueprint is for us to have to lay people off in order to give an, an enhancement to our, our, our staff. So there's some things that we really need to work through. Jane's team across the state is extremely strong. Um, and, and Jane leads the charge on that on our behalf. And we appreciate that. And, and certainly in our organization, we're gonna continue to fight the battle as well. And that needs to be with all stakeholders. I mean, we have taxpayers, we have commissioners, we got staff. All, yeah. You know, they all got to understand this because there's no money tree, and you know, we got to make this happen. And yeah. you know, if you don't have the money, what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Thank you, Jane, so much. Thank you. Okay, thank thank you. you. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good time fun. The. HR report. Uh, can I get a motion to approve it as presented? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Miss Passon, okay. <laughs> on record, it's a lovely color on you, Thank that you. green. Thank you. Good evening, Vice President Bennett and members of the board, Dr. Salins and members of the executive team. For the record, my name is Bridget Passan. I'm the English Language Arts Supervisor for grades three through 12. I'm here tonight for my annual request for funding for digital licenses and consumables to support instruction in our middle school ELA classes and in our high school English classes. So I'll start with item number 402, which is for the middle school licenses and consumables. I'm requesting $111,883.53 for the purchase of digital, consume, digital licenses and consumables to support ELA in grades six through eight. Is there any questions, comments? Before you ask it, there's shipping and handling in here, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I no, do I don't that. have any questions. <laughs> Okay, okay, the motion to approve. Make a motion to approve the middle school digital licenses and consumable textbooks. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. 
And my second and final request for the evening is for our high school English courses. So to support those courses, I am asking for seven, $79,526.12 to support the purchase of digital licenses and consumable textbooks for English 1 through English 4. Any comments, questions? Can I get a motion? Make a motion to uh, approve the high school English digital licenses and consumables textbooks. Second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Thank very, you much. very much. Thank you. Have awesome. a great Thank summer. You very Take much. good care. You, you have a good one. Um, so good, good evening once again. Tonight we bring before you an update to policy 310. The update to policy 310 is a result of House Bill number 543. In House Bill 543 in recent le legislation, it raises a small procurement pr threshold from 50,000 to 100,000. We are requesting to raise our threshold from 25,000 per invoice to 50,000 per invoice. I know we had a just for everyone, you know, maybe watching, we had a big discussion about this to just, you know, everything has gone so, up so high that uh, we just need to trust that that threshold. We don't need to look at the little stuff. We can look at the bigger pictures. And then you can be more responsive when we have um, dire issues that come up as they unfortunately frequently do with our, with some of our, well, as Sid knows, with some <laughs> of our um, hardware. Okay. Any, any other questions or comments? No, I, th I think we, we've it? been over this, and I think you know that previous policy has long, long been around. And I think it's prudent, and there's there's a, a lot of checks and balances with anything being spent in this organization. It's not that, so that doesn't. And you know, some things come up. I think you know that fifty thousand dollars you can have emergency over a holiday, mm -hmm. and and yeah. uh, you know you just need to get this stuff going and you get in the, in the chain to be ordered. So yeah. I think this is very prudent of us to to, to change this to fifty thousand yeah, at the current time. Yeah, it doesn't take long to rise to that amount. That's yeah. for sure. Not, not these days. No, not these days. Thank you. Can I get a motion? I make a motion to uh, approve policy three ten procurement of goods and services to fifty thousand dollars per invoice. Second. Without board approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pender, you were just talking. Yes, Mr. Pender. That's fine. No. All right. Um, Good evening, uh, Vice President Bennett, Dr. Salem's board members, executive team. For the record, my name is Sid Pender, Chief Operating Officer. Um, I'm filling in for Mr. Josh Coombs, our Supervisor of Technology. Um, for tonight, I am seeking approval for the purchase of 600 Dell Chromebook 11 3100s for kindergarten students. Um, we are currently working on replacing the Chromebooks for all kindergarten students. Uh, this device supported for doing assessments and current online curriculum. Prices and pricing and quotes were provided by data networks. Um, the purchase is being made through the intergovernmental cooperative purchasing agreement, uh, specifically through the Maryland Education Enterprise Consortium using the contract number UMD 972016. Um, the MEEC is the most common vehicle to purchase technology um, and technology related items for the school system. Um, just a little bit about the MEEC. Uh, provides all its members uh, with contracts to efficiently purchase IT hardware, software, technology related services um, at outstanding values. Uh, membership to the MEEC is open to the public and private K um, to 20 institutions, educational institutions, federal institutions, and public libraries in the state. The amount of the purchase uh, is $280,200. And this will be funded through the ESSER 3 and FY23 fund balance. And I would like to point out, as Mr. Smith said earlier, there is no shipping cost associated with this. <laughs> All right. Um, Dr. Salins, Mr. Pender, do you guys know? 
are these, um, is this equipment going to go home with our students like the older students do, or is this in classroom only? To my knowledge, it will be in classroom only. They're using it for primarily for iReady instruction gotcha. and for KRA, um, which is the kindergarten readiness assessment. Um, a lot of our, a lot of those, um, the littles take the assessments online, but they're not physically online. The teacher actually does a lot of that with, you know what I mean, not right. some anecdotal type of things. Yeah. But, um, but so, no, to my knowledge, no, that could could be wrong. And certainly Dr. Sprankle can follow up with an sense. email just to check in, but to my knowledge, no. So at this point with this purchase, does that mean every student in our county has a school-issued laptop now? A school-issued device. A school-issued device. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, well, it's probably nothing that I, um, I know. I know. I know you're just stepping in. If it's technology question, I, hang on. Right. So, how much time do we think that there's? Because I'm kind of of the mind of, of reversal. That I I know that there's a lot of studies that show that, and especially at that level, that computers are not the best way to learn. That it's paper. Um, that. Uh, and, and that's a good point, but honestly, our teachers do a very good balance. Um, okay. They use these a lot of times, too, in stations. So the kids go and they have um, stations that they go to where they might be, at this age, manipulating sand and right. doing things with that, or letters where they're placing them and matching them with clay, and then they might have one where they're, they're on the iPad or, or the Chromebooks. And um, so I think it's part of their rotation in that aspect and then primarily used for that testing piece of it. Um, so please don't get the impression that, yeah, that we have our littles on oh, no, computers that's what I was all asking. the time. It's like, what is no, that? It's, a, it's a good balance. They'll, they will use them developmentally appropriately as how we use, that's how our terms that we use. Yeah. A great question. Yeah. And when I was in some classrooms, I think they have banks where they put these things in a in a mm -hmm. cabinet so they're charged they you know, do they, they put them back in a charging a, station charging station so mm -hmm. it's not like this one where you have to plug it in and go home and right. you know they yeah. put them in a in a bank or a little cabinet cart. and then cart mm -hmm. right yeah it's a little move. charging cart and they keep them in there and you know um and actually i'm, I'm looking right at dr kibler his he's got little so he knows um the program <laughs> better, better than any of us probably um that they do use them appropriately they're not on them all day long uh, yeah and, and they have not in my experience, they haven't brought them home ever. It's just using the class uh, to supplement what the teacher will do instructionally. It is part of their unified arts rotation, so they do have one day a week where they have the dedicated hour for a uh, computer lab. So, I mean, they're learning, I mean, because the technology is going to be a part of their life, so they're learning how to be. Yeah, well, I hardly think our kids have a problem knowing how to use a computer at this point. Well, they do maybe. actually get, um, <laughs> believe it or not, a lot of them have really good um, navigating, but they don't have the keyboarding skills that are necessary. Mm -hmm. So that's where that hour comes into play. About half of that time during that hour they're using for um, building their, their keyboarding um, abilities. And then the other half, uh, typically, I think they are trying to really sneak in some social emotional learning as it relates to, you know, I mean, that's a good opportunity mm -hmm. for us to use this as a vehicle to get to some of those social emotional learning type of activities. I do have a question about the price. I just purchased the same computer probably three months ago and I paid $270 for the same exact computer. So I'm just, it, what is, is there another charge for like the support or you get a three year rotational and did I get the, what? Are you gonna get it replaced in three years or four years? Or yeah. Nope, just bought the, it out. So, so <laughs> there should it, be a difference. Do you have the same I mean do you have the same memory and the same, same everything. As really? That's why I was wondering what is there support or something else that goes with this that well, it does say on here Chromebook uh, 4G, 32G, four years pro SUP plus WGS. I'm assuming SUP could be support. You also have the Gumdrop series clamshell. Which is the case that keeps it from mm -hmm. being broken. I have to defer. I know. I know. Sure. I'm sorry. I'm it's fine. Well, it, 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 does, it says thanks for choosing Dell. For, a, for tech support, visit. Yeah, and it's a three-year extended warranty. There's other right. things that go so with it. It looks, like it, it looks like each device is averaging about $450, and that would include the case as well as the extended warranty as well right. as the support. <coughs> Four so. years of technical support, limited hardware warranty. There's other things that go with it. And if we probably dig deep, it's probably loaded with 
the software that we need necessary for our students to do iReady and things like that. Correct. Well, okay. Well, don't we? Well, we buy those licenses, so. It, um, not for yes, I already the computer doesn't come, stop, but, right. Just because we buy it, it doesn't mean that computer comes oh, loaded okay. that way. Right. They have to set it up so that when they give it to a child, it's ready to go on our network mm -hmm. with our equipment, yeah. with our... Does it have that on there somewhere? Am I missing that where it says it's the software is going to be preloaded? I don't know. I said I'm sure if we... No, no, no. I'm, I'm, sorry. I know, I'm, I'm, not, sure. I'm not actually asking yeah. Mr. Pinder here. <laughs> I know he's... This is not his thing. Well, um, okay. we'll have Carrie um, okay. reach out to Josh and have him break yeah, down and um, and share with you. Okay. Yeah, maybe he could just send us a little summary on what the questions we asked him. Yeah, exactly. On. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? I make a motion we approve Dell Chromebooks for kindergarten as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oppose, I, I oppose. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That, it? that was it. Mm -hmm. Future meetings and events. We got July 12th, 6 p.m. for our regular meeting in July because we skipped the July 5th because of the holiday. Um, and then July 19th for our work session. Is that our, everybody still okay with that? Yep. Okay. Yep. I get a motion to... I make a motion to adjourn and move into a closed session. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much.